been known to spit the flows and make a shaky, shaky thing. Pop and lock and stop and let it hang. Watch us as we drop this hip hop, it's like it stays. We make a whole room drop. Hello, 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 and welcome to Sports Buzz, the fanatical view. I am your host, Scott D. Lewis, here live in studio Comcast Cable Channel 23, Danbury, Connecticut, live from 6 to 6 30. Uh, fastest talk show, sports talk in the hey, history hey, you, of all sports. You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> so fast, I don't even know how to say that anymore. 203-792-4101 is the number on this. What is uh, turning out to be a pretty nice. Uh, just, just your mic, it's a little, or have a little uh, trouble picking. A pretty nice day, just June How's 14th. that, any better? Are we having a little issues? We're or? having some issues with a... Uh, little technicalities yeah, with the t- technicals? Yeah, talk, talk a little. Hello, hello, are we live and direct? This is what we do in the live show. Any stole issues or? Uh... You gotta hook your mic. You know, I knew this John Lester shirt was a bad See, idea. That was a an omen, right? <laughs> it was a bad idea all around. I think you show it. You show us kept the uh, Johnny know. Damon. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? A little better? Is that better? We doing a little okay. better now. All right. Yeah, so you sorry know. about that. Let's uh, let's start this whole hello. Uh, um, <laughs> Scott D. Lewis, you're live in studio, as we said, on this what is turning out to be a lovely uh, Thursday, June yes. 14th. The rain is, I think, clearing out. We might have I a think... nice weekend on tap. Who knows? The weather's been so crazy lately. But for now, it's nice, and they say it's going to be nice this weekend, so that'll be good. And uh, we've heard our man right there, Mr. Bob Rod Jr., chiming in, telling me to fix my microphone. Bob, what's going on? How you doing? I'm doing well, Scott, and you? I'm good. I'm good. We're, uh, you know, we're about a, almost a week into the Danbury Westerner season. Before we get into it, let's uh, mention in studio one Mike Tui directing the show from uh, Expose Cinema. Mike's show is on Friday nights at 10 o'clock, also re airs Wednesdays at 11. Uh, Mr. John Newmuller doing, doing the uh, graphics, taking care of all the photos for us. His show, Danbury Live, is Saturdays, uh, 7 o'clock, and Tuesdays, 11. I'm not sure, sure who else is hanging out. Scott uh, the Real Man, I think yeah, I heard him there. Yeah. Maybe Barb Kaidel from yeah. These Days. Her show's on at 7.30 tonight. Yes. So you can always tune into that. And, of course, Westerners Roundup. Round up. An hour-long show tonight. Oh, a big special hour-long show tonight. Follows from us 6.30 till 7.30. 7:30. And also Friday, 1.30, that re-airs. We, of course, re-air Fridays at 1. Westerners Roundup, one hour. There's uh, The season's underway. Plenty of things to show in the yes. uh, one-hour special. Uh, game action, interviews, uh, the, the breakfast, the celebrity breakfast, breakfast with Jim Bowden, Bowden last Friday morning. So uh, the team, Bob, two and two to start. Yes. Uh, they won that home opener. We were down there Friday night. Yes. Got some good footage, some interviews and stuff. Uh, they beat the Mystic Shooners seven to three. Nice little uh, pitching uh, performance on opening night. And Scott Hagen hit the big three run homer. Uh, before the rain came, rain uh, it was raining the last few innings, but they got the full nine in, and uh, it was Brett Housel uh, winning the game. Brett Housel from Marist. He uh, only had one strikeout, but he did come up with three timely double plays over his seven innings pitched, and the bullpen shut him down. So they won that first game. Uh, Miss that, Connecticut uh, graced oh, yes. us with her per, uh, presence. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't Miss Connecticut that we were talking about last week. Last week it was actually a different Miss Connecticut. Connecticut. The Miss Connecticut we had throwing out the first pitch uh, was from Danbury. Yes. Uh, she goes to Westcon, and uh, she will be uh, competing for one of the many uh, pageants, Miss Connecticut United States. And her time will be in uh, less than 25 days, about 20 days away, three weeks or so. She'll see if she can uh, give Connecticut the first ever Miss United States. So we will wish her well. She was a nice girl. Threw out a uh, first pitch and she threw it over the plate. Didn't bounce it up there. So I know she was nervous. She told me that she was a little bit more nervous worrying about throwing the first pitch than being in the yes. pageant. So uh, her, uh, her uh, blood pressure was high for that, but she did it. She got it all right. And the team responded. Then Saturday, uh, it was a tough loss for them. It was a well-pitched game. It went into the ninth inning, 2-2. Two to two, And Steve Catalina from UConn, who was out with injury, he was on the 2010 team. Yes, He's he a was. returning player. And he was on that team that made the deep run in the playoffs. He came in after being out with injury this year, uh, recovering from injury in his first outing. He gave up a two-run homer in the ninth, and they lost 4-2 to North Adams on that night. 
And then Monday night. With your uh, debut as. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> I did the uh, public address, my Bob Shepard impersonation. Mm. Now batting, number 18. Uh, it went pretty good. The uh, I did a pretty good job, I think. Everybody was pretty was happy that, with the performance. That, that, but the one time I come down to do public address, <laughs> it turns into an 1811 three and a half hour marathon that they lost to Vermont. Oh, that was unbelievable. Vermont jumps on them early, four zip. Uh, the Westerners rally, end up taking an 8 6 lead in this game after five. But. They give up a 10 spot in the sixth inning, and that was ugly. All told, 29 runs scored, 28 hits, 16 walks, four hit uh, by pitch, eight doubles, seven home runs, seven errors. All added up to three hours and 30 minutes of baseball. 18-11, well, that, that, they lost to Vermont. That one inning of 10 runs, it was what, two? Oh. It was what, two three-run homers? I got to work out that <laughs> inning. Now batting. Yeah. Now batting. Now batting. Now batting. <laughs> they went through the lineup. Vermont did a, a, almost twice. Batted around almost twice and full one one and a half times around the lineup in that ten run inning in the sixth. So, and then even the the Westerners scored some more runs after that to make it 18-11. So I mean, offensively they played well. They did come back and get a nine seven win last night. They were rained out on Tuesday. Yep. Uh, Wednesday they did beat North Adams up there in. Uh, where does North Adams play? I'm not even sure. Uh, okay. It was Tom Zangle out of North Carolina with another big outing. He uh, had a big game in that loss to Vermont. And then last night, two doubles and a home run. Uh, and he scored the two-run double in the top of the eighth to break a 7-7 tie, give them the 9-7 win over North Adams. So they are right now 2-2. Two and two. Uh, They had the six-run fifth inning in that game. They were down 6-1. So they have offensively shown the ability to come from behind. They need to get the pitching back in order after the first two games yes. where they pitched well. The last two outings, not so much. Tonight they're at Keene, the defending uh, champs, the Swamp Bats. And uh, then they'll be back home Friday night versus North Adams and at Vermont on Saturday. And then back for Vermont. And then they're home again versus Vermont on Monday. Monday. So they got a few ma matchups with Vermont here. Vermont is loaded with lefties in that lineup. I think that's what uh, gave them problems in that game. So they're going to have to deal with the left handed lineup. It was like every oh, yeah. batter, you know, five, six guys at least in that lineup left handed. And they did a number on the pitching staff the other night. We'll see what happens, who's pitching. Uh, when they face up with and, Vermont uh, again. One little note, but not nothing to, uh, for North Adams. Um, they have uh, Connor Biggio, who is so Mike Craig, B Craig, Craig Biggio's, Biggio's son, son. Okay, is playing I, for them. And he's leading the league right now with home runs. I think he I has I saw four. there was a Biggio. Uh, I didn't know if he was actually yes. a Craig Biggio's son or related, but he's his son. All right. Yes. So going down to Rogers Park. Uh, you know, you can see things like Dave King performing yes. live uh, yes. in the home opener. He sang his uh, wonderful theme song there. Um, you know, also Saturday we had the vintage game took place uh, in conjunction with the Danbury Museum and Historical Society. It was the Westfield Wheelman versus the Newtown Sandy Hooks. And of course, the museum also has covering the bases, a pictorial okay. history of baseball in Danbury, which is on display at the museum all summer and into the fall. It's up until October. So if you want to go down to Main Street, check out the museum, you can see that they've got some great photos. And also the vintage game was great. And if you're inter is interested in the vintage game, it was really neat to see. Uh, we got a special show coming up where you could get to see the action, but you can follow these guys, search them out online, look for this Newtown Sandy Hooks, check out their schedule, they're on Facebook. You can find them elsewhere online and check out the schedule. They talked about some really great events that they have uh, coming up throughout the summer. So if you want to go, check, they were playing. They're playing at a wine vineyard yeah. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, wine you know, vineyard. Free wine, free beer, beer. Watch some vintage baseball. Sounds like some uh, nice stuff going on throughout the summer. So I would recommend looking up these guys, the Newtown Sandy Hooks, and seeing where they're playing because uh, you know they had some good stuff coming up. So that was pretty good on Saturday. And of course, the coaches are back. So, you know, we'll see what the season brings for the Westerners as uh, Jamie Shevchik leads the squad in his fifth season. Bethel's Sean Fesh, he's back for his fifth year. And uh, Larry Yurkonis, 
uh, from Keystone College. He's the hitting coach there. He's been with Shevchik down there for three years. Now he's with the Westerners for a second season. Yes. And last year they let, they set a record, actually, NECBL record for team batting average. So he's doing a good job. Uh, we'll see if he can do that again already. They're scoring runs. So obviously doing a pretty good job there. And some players are back. The defending batting champ, Andrew Garner, out of Tulane. He yes. hit 384 yes. last year. Uh, he hit 289 this season at Tulane. A couple infield lawyers are back. Chase Butler, Jake Gronsky. Uh, we mentioned Catalina's back from the 2010 team. Yeah, he's back. And from... also Eric Lu Luxis is a pitcher who's back. And then some locals, yes. Ian Ratsford, uh, the Danbury head coach, uh, who's been there for a while for the Hatters, right? Yes, he has. And I, that was uh, one of my classmates in Oh, he 19... went to school with him. Yes, and now he's the head coach for a while since yes. the 90s, sometime mid-90s. His yeah. son, Ian Ratsford, plays for the Westerners now. And also a New Milford kid, Greg Osner, a pitcher, he did get roughed up in that 18-11 yeah. game. He came in in a tough spot. Nobody out, bases yeah. loaded, and he gave up a grand slam. That was not pretty. No. But, you know, it was a tough spot for him. His first outing for the team, uh, really tough spot there. Uh, but we'll see how he does. So there's some local kids and, uh, you know, some good players on the team. Some big programs, New North Carolina, Georgia Tech, Kentucky, Missouri. Schools like that are well represented on the team. So we'll see how they do this year. We know we're going to be keeping track of them. We've got a couple specials coming up over the next couple weeks. Next week we'll be live, but after that, you'll get some more stuff on the vintage and also interviews with the players. And, of course, the Westerners Roundup has all that going on every week. Yes. So you can see that happening. Let's stick with baseball as we've killed a little time here. I'm going to have to talk about the Yankees, Bob, because... Why do you want to talk about the Yankees? Don't look now. 16-4 and four over the last 20, and they now have the best record in the American League sitting atop the AL East, 37 and 25, uh, as they've run off some wins here against Kansas City, Oakland, the Angels. Well, actually, they lost two out of three to the Angels. It's the only downturn they've had. The Tigers, the Rays, the Mets, Subway Series, Series a little sweep at the uh, Bronx last weekend. What happened there, Bob? Your team came uh, up well, lame. You know, things happen in City Field, you know. Uh, I was in the Bronx, actually. <laughs> Not in City Field. Then they go to Atlanta. Yeah. And, and Atlanta you know, takes. I will say this about the 16-4 and four run for the Yankees. It could be a little bit of fool's gold because all they're doing, Bob, is hitting home runs. It is the uh, Bronx Bombers, not the Bronx Bummers right now during yeah. this stretch. They still are not doing a great job hitting with runners in scoring position. They've been uh, among the league lowest uh, with runners in scoring position until the other night when A-Rod, A-Royd, Payrod went deep and hit the Grand Slam. They had been doing terrible with runner with bases loaded, but he did uh, tie Lou Gehrig, 24th, I believe, all time uh, for Grand Slams. Uh, he ties him for the record there. Uh, so, you know, big blast for him. And that was in a game they were losing 4-0 in the eighth inning in Atlanta. He hits a Grand Slam to tie it. Nick Swisher then hits a two-run home run. Two batters later, they win 6-4. So, you know, they're hitting home runs in every game. That's all they're doing, you know. So that's been a recipe for success during the regular season. This is why they're always in the playoffs. But then when it comes playoff time against good pitchers, when uh, the home run ball doesn't really show up as much, they lose. So we'll see how this goes over the course of the summer. But right now, they are streaking to the top of the American League. They've uh, taken over first place, thanking your Mets. Yeah. The Mets helped them out by losing in the Bronx three straight. Yeah. The bullpen, by the way, blowing a couple of games there. Uh, you know, really was poor. Johan, coming off the no-hitter, gets two extra days off. And then he gives up four home runs in the opener on Friday night. Uh, but then they get some help from the uh, from the Mets. The Rays were in first place. Yeah. The Mets leave the Bronx. They go down Tampa Bay. They complete the sweep this afternoon. Bob yes, Johan, they did. by the way, pitched again. He gave up four runs in the first four innings, but he settled down, stayed in the games. And this was a nice sign. Jason Bay hit a home run today, Bob. Yes. He was one for 20 since coming back from injury. And everybody was thinking, this is it. Bay is done. But he had a hit last night, and then he hits a home run tonight. So while Johan was struggling early, uh, Neuenheis hit a home run in the first inning. Bay hit a home run in the first uh, couple innings in this game. 
to uh, make it 4-4, and then they run away from with it, and they win 9-6 to complete the sweep. How about this going up against Tampa with that vaunted pitching staff down in Tampa Bay? They win games 9-1, to 11-2. to 2. Dickey, unbelievable, flirts with a number. Oh, that was a great game last night. R.A. Dickey flirts with a no-hitter. He gives up one hit, and then they win nine. So they score nine runs, 11 runs, and nine runs against Tampa down in Tampa. Unbelievable. They sweep Tampa Bay. Shocking. So now they're going to head to uh, Cincinnati. Uh, so, I mean, in the middle of interleague play, yeah. what's going on? Isn't Cincinnati in the National League, Bob? Yeah. Uh, why are they playing Cincinnati during the middle of interleague play? I don't know. Don't ask me that question. I don't know. I, mean, I don't what's make, going on? make these uh, decisions. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was an interleague play. It's supposed to be interleague play, but, you They're know. playing the Big Red Machine? Yeah. I, I, I could swear they play in National League. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I'm confused. I'm not sure what's happening there. Don't 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 try and figure it out because it doesn't work. And uh... <laughs> who knows? Baseball and the schedules Baseball is... are a joke. I mean, the Yankees get the Braves mm-hmm. next week. They get the Braves again. Yeah. And so now they're playing multiple teams twice. They're not just playing the Mets twice. No. They get the Braves and the Mets twice. They yes. don't have to play Miami. No. From the NL East. No. They do get to play the Nationals. Who oh yes. Are six and zero oh, and their road trip they just completed. They yes. swept Mr. my Red Sox. Yes, uh, uh, Steven Strasburg did a Strasburg get. Strasburg Express and uh, Bryce Harper did a number on the Red Sox. Actually, the pitching did well for the Red Sox, mm. but the uh, hitting was, was uh, not uh, to be found. As that Nationals, uh, who lead the NL with pitching staff right now, playing very well, uh, they did a number and then they went and swept Toronto up in Toronto. Now they come home. They get a day off. They're in first place. Three, uh, five games clear now of Atlanta mm-hmm. and the Mets. Four and a half with the Mets winning today. Uh, clear of first, ba- first place, and they will get the red hot Yankees. We'll see if the Nationals at home in D.C. You know there's going to be some Yankee fans down there. Oh. We'll see what their pitching staff can do against the Yankees, who still, like I said, hitting home runs, but not hitting for average, not hitting with runners in scoring position. I'm interested to see how that goes down. Speaking of pitching, uh, before we get to my Red Sox, who did bounce back. Actually, we'll mention them real quick. They did take two of three from Miami down there against the Marlins after getting swept by the Nationals and losing two of three at home against the Orioles. So the Sox fell below 500 again after going three games above 500. They're now one game below. Let's mention this real quick. Uh, Last night... First time ever, San Francisco Giants history. Matt Kane was Kane and perfectly able yes. as he delivers the perfect game, first perfect game in the history of the Giants. And he did it in front of the San Francisco crowd at home. That was a great game. Couple real nice defensive plays in the outfield, diving catches to preserve that perfect game. And he got it done. So hats off to uh, Matt Kane. Uh, what do we have? Five no hitters in yes. baseball this year. Yeah, it's only it's, there was a combined no hitter. Seattle had yeah. what four or five pitchers complete yeah. a no hitter the other night in yeah. Seattle. We know Johan did it recently. A few other guys doing it. So five no hitters, two perfect games in the last two years, I believe. So the perfect game in vogue. A uh, quick look at the standings. We mentioned the Nats. They're in first place. Cincinnati, one game above Charlie Morton's Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, The St. Louis Cardinals slumping a little bit. They're two games back now. So Cincinnati in first. The Dodgers still holding off the Giants at four and a half games uh, lead out west. In the east, the Yankees move in front of Baltimore. Baltimore is still playing well, though, Bob. Only a game out. Um, In the central, it's the Chai Sox still (laughs) holding off Cleveland, (laughs) Chicago, doing a number there and uh, Detroit still struggling uh, five five games below 500 yeah. the Tigers not doing a good job Cleveland is in second place there and out west it's all Texas but the Angels now three games over 500 so they're competing and oh by the way the Red Sox get to go visit old friend Theo Epstein in Chicago oh, they will yeah. be checking out the Cubbies when, when's this supposed to be this weekend three oh, games yeah? set in the Windy City the, first, the Cubs the only... have the worst record in baseball the Padres are right there with them both of them only with 21 wins the Cubs 21 and 40 so hopefully the Red Sox can say hello to Theo by winning three straight. 
but at least, NBA, Bob. But at least the one nice thing is about going out there, at least they're playing in both, they're both playing in original parks. Original parks, Wrigley and Fenway, two Are, great ballparks, two of the top two ballparks. There we see the cheerleaders, Oklahoma City. Yes, they are okay with those look nice yes. looking cheerleaders. But before we get to OKC, let's uh, talk about the Celtics. Ran out of gas. Last week I was giddy with excitement over game six, but the schedule doomed them, Bob. You know I was worried about the schedule. Mm -hmm. I like to see the players in these uh, games being able to play at the highest level, but the NBA does not allow that. No extra days off for travel. Right. The Celtics played every other day from about game four in round two against yes. the Sixers. They didn't have any, day, any extra days off in between round two and round three with Miami. No extra days off during that series. Traveling back and forth from Miami to Boston, to Boston, Boston to, to Miami. Miami. Yeah. And uh, they came home for game six, looking to close it out up games three, games to two. But Bron Bron did a number. The refs did a number. And they were done. They went back to Miami. They were re-energized for game seven. They did have a lead throughout that game. But when it came down to it, they had no legs left in the fourth quarter. They were outscored there. And the Heat come up with the win in game seven and they finish off the Celtics, maybe finish young off the big three. Yeah. Uh, I do not expect, unless he comes at a discounted rate with the desire to come off the bench, Ray Allen to be back. I do expect you Kevin don't Garnett think he'll be to back be back. Next year? I think Kevin Garnett will come back. Ray is a toss up. Well, here's what I'll say, Bob. You know, this was a lockout shortened season. Uh, injuries plagued this team. I mean, Jeff Green and Chris Wilcox went down with heart ailments. And then Avery Bradley went down during the playoffs. If they got those three guys to come back, plus the kids that were rookies this year who showed some promise during the season, if they get them playing a few more minutes, Ray Allen comes off the bench, which he did most of the second half of the season. During the playoffs, he had to start because Avery Bradley was out. You know, he wants to come back as a bench player at a discounted rate. Yeah. If Kevin Garnett wants to come back, well, you know, they're going to have to pay him some because he played at a real high level this year. But, you know, if they can get that team back, I think they go for another run. I mean, they're yeah. game seven this year of the Eastern Conference Finals. Who else right. is going to beat them? The Bulls, the Heat again. I mean, the Heat are going to lose to Oklahoma bricks? City. <laughs> the Bricks, the Insanity, I don't think so. You know, I think, I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if all three were back. Ray would be the one guy I think might go. But I think Kevin Garnett will be back for sure. So we'll see how that goes. But the uh, series going on in Oklahoma City uh, as we're running out of time, I think OKC showed what they can do as they ran by the Heat in the second half of the game one. And I, can I would expect more of the same. They're too deep. They're too athletic. They're just going to come at you nonstop. Durantula is going to prove to Bron Bron that you can win in a small market. You don't have to bag your team and say, we can't win here because my team doesn't bring me players. Look what's going on in Oklahoma City. These guys are only 23, 24 years old, yeah. him and Westbrook, and they're going to win the title this year. So we hope that happens, and we hope he proves to Bron Bron you do not need to bag out on Cleveland and go to Miami to try to wrap that thing up. All right, that's what we're talking about there at the NBA. NHL, Connecticut kid. It does it all. <laughs> Jonathan Quick wins the Conn Smythe Trophy. The Devils, give them credit, they forced a game six, but it was all Kings in game six as they win six to one to close it out. And he wins the Conn Smythe. They get to raise the cup for LA, first time ever for LA. Big deal out west. Uh, hockey, you know, the great one uh, brought hockey there. And it took a while for them to get back to the Stanley Cup Finals. This time it's a Connecticut kid yes. doing it for them. 16-4 and four record during the Stanley Cup Finals playoff run they had. They knocked off the 1, 2, and 3 seed out west. They were 10-1 and one on the road. You know, I don't think he gave up more than three goals ever in a game throughout the whole run. He was unbelievable. It had a lot to do with their defense. You know, there was games where they did not give up that many shots on goal, but he stood tall. He was tremendous, and they win it. So congratulations to the Milford born and a Hamden High School, Avon High School kid, Jonathan Quick, the Los Angeles Kings, winning the Stanley Cup. Um, all right, tennis, speaking of winning, Maria Sharapova did complete that Grand Slam we were talking about. She uh, completed the career Grand Slam in the French, and then Rafa returns to rule 
Roland Garros <laughs> for his seventh title. And do not forget to roll your R R's when you speak of this, Bob. Yes, okay. <laughs> he wins his seventh title. And uh, we see a little boxing there. Uh, Pac-Man was robbed this weekend, a weekend after Delvin did not get robbed. He just didn't uh, perform well. Our Danbury kid there, Rodriguez, in his title shot. Pac-Man, Pacquiao, and this is a black eye for boxing big yeah. time, Bob, because everybody had Pac-Man winning this fight handily in a decision. Somehow, some way, the judges see otherwise. And then we also had the big event this past weekend, which was the Belmont Stakes. Which didn't happen for have another. <laughs> I'll have another. It's more like I'll wait for another triple crown as that did not go down. I'll have another shockingly was scratched from the uh, from the race on Friday, the day before the big race. Uh, he comes up with a potential injury. It wasn't yeah. even a injury. Right. The development of tendonitis, they said he could have run and somebody got paid perhaps. <laughs> Uh, as you know, speaking of boxing and the uh, dirty pool that goes yes. on there with boxing, horse racing is another sport where there's a lot of gambling involved, a lot of backdoor deals. So a lot of speculation as to what really happened here, why he was scratched from the race. Union Rags, who, you know, I kind of thought might win the race anyways. I think it would have been a very good race. I mean, it's real disappointing. So close to having a surprise triple crown because yes. Coming into the season, there was not much buildup. He was a surprise winner, and then he went and won the second leg. Looked good coming into the third leg, but did not happen. So horse racing fans and sports fans in general were denied the Triple Crown. So that's it, Bob. How do you feel about your Mets bouncing back after that? I, uh, I think they're doing great. I hope they go all the way. I hope they... You know, they got these series against Cincinnati, yeah. then they play Baltimore, two tough teams. You know, if they can get through those games playing well, they got the Yankees again back at City Field. I'd like to see a little bounce back yeah. from them. Uh, we'll see if my Red Sox can get back on the right foot against the Cubbies. And of course, the Westerners. Yes. Uh, at home Friday night after a road game tonight. And then uh, they will be home Monday. They're also home next week on Wednesday and Thursday, which means Bob will not be, be here. here. He'll be at Rogers Park. Park. But that's the show. Make sure you tune into okay. the hour-long special of Westerners Roundup. They are following us and all the other shows that go down. Exposé Cinema, Danbury Live, These Days, The Riddle Man. They're all right here on Comcast Cable Channel 23. We'll see you next week.